All right, um, let's pick up with one more idea about vaccination. Um, right now, um, with the COVID-19 crisis, uh, we don't have a vaccination, but we anticipate that we may at some time in the future. Um, so for now, we're working with just the plain SIR model, um, but once we get the vaccine, we can do the SIR with vaccine. Um, so let's add a time delay um, to having the vaccine. So here we go. Here's our code that we had. It's pretty simple what we need to do. Um, we'll have another time in the parameters, which is T delay. And let's make that say 30 weeks from now. Um, so the time um, delay till vaccine ready, and it will be in weeks. Okay, so if we continue with that, we need to figure out what to do with this time delay. Right. So it turns out we actually have what we need in the, remember the engine of this whole thing is in this calculation loop. Um, we already have an if statement built into here for if the susceptible population goes below zero, or I'm sorry, is stays above zero. As long as there are susceptible people, we would want to give them the vaccine. Um, that's what the plus DV does. Okay. So um, we'll be transferring people into the uh, remove pool um, by using the DV, okay? Um, it's really DVDT, we'll be adding that into the, um, the rate at which people are entering the, the remove pool. Um, but then down here in this line of code, if everyone had been vaccinated, we don't give the vaccine anymore, okay? So what we can do is we can put a double logic statement here, um, which would be an and, and if we put it two ands, um, that means both the conditions need to be true. So we're about to add a second condition, and that is that T of IT must be greater than or equal to uh, T delay. So right now, um, that will not let us add um, the, the vaccination rate, um, to the rate at which the uh, removal pool is growing, unless we're above the delay time. So that simple line of code should make the difference. Um, let's see what happens. Uh, let's start with, um, actually, let's make the time delay zero and see what happens. That should give us what we already had. Um, let's beef up the, um, the A value so that we actually can see the infection build up. So let's go to 0.9 there. Okay, we can see infection. Um, let's lower our B so that this is the medical treatment part the, that helps to remove infected people. So I lowered the B. Okay, so we have a very interesting looking curve here. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delay giving the vaccine. So let's say we don't give the vaccine um, for 10 weeks. We should see that curve shift over um, to the right. Okay, and we can see, oh, the peak got much larger, okay? Um, so the epidemic was allowed to build up for a while um, before we start giving the vaccine. So there's actually a very steep growth um, in the infection, and we get up to about 60% of the population. Let me go back to not having a delay. So without the delay, can make the graphs a little bigger by uh, creating a little more room here, shrinking our command window. So we can see... Um, that the peak is somewhere in the 50% range, um, and it's happening right around 15 weeks. But if we put a 10-week delay into giving the vaccine, all right, the peak gets much, uh, a bit higher. It's like more like 62%. Um, and then the vaccine's kicking in. Uh, remember, the vaccine was, uh, we began giving it in week 10, which would be about here. Um, but the uh, epidemic had already built up further, um, so it builds up to a higher amount before it can start coming down. Um, so let's make the delay um, 20 weeks instead and see what happens. So let's see, what did that do to my model? Uh, did I actually run it? I think I, oh, I did not run it.
that seems to have not done anything. Let me figure out what is wrong here. Ah, I believe nothing is wrong. The problem is that at 20 weeks, um, the susceptible population has dropped to essentially zero. In other words, they've all been sick already. Um, so they never were able to use the vaccine. Um, so let's push the curve out a bit further. By, let's bring our A value down a bit further um, so we can push that. Uh, actually, let's raise that A value up. Um, so we'll push the epidemic further out. So let's make this instead of 0.9, uh, let's make this a 1.5 and push that epidemic further out. Um, so you can see that it creates a much larger spike. Um, and now um, people are getting infected quickly. Um, in fact, that might be the opposite problem. I think we need to lower this. Let's make this a 0.4 and see what happens. Ah, yes, that moves the, um, because it takes much longer for us to build up to a full scale um, infection rate, which will actually not be all that high, it'll be about 25%, which is still much larger than we would like it to be. Um, now that there's a 20 week delay, um, it, that will have an impact. If we bring this delay um, down to 10 weeks, we can see that the curve goes flatter. We were, we were vaccinating people earlier, so we were removing people from the susceptible population before they got sick. Um, if we move it back to 20, there we are. Okay, if we move it out to 30, you can see the peak of the curve is higher. So the sooner we can get that vaccine out there, um, the better. But another important thing that we just showed again was if we lower the A value, uh, let's go down to 0.3, we're pushing the peak further out in time um, of the infection, the peak infections, um, and therefore the, the vaccine has more of a chance. Uh, you know, we, it took us 30 weeks to get the vaccine, that's right here. Um, but because we had a very low A value, the peak of the um, epidemic was further out and we were able to um, you know, keep the curve much lower than it had been, okay? So the time delay isn't good. This is actually going to make our model, we're gonna have more infections than we did without the time delay. Um, the time delay is a bad thing, um, but it's realistic. In our model, um, it's possible we will have a vaccine 30 weeks from now that's actually um, could be manufactured and um, up and running. Um, so we could start getting it out there. Perhaps we could get it to 1% of the population every week. Um, and then if we can keep that A value low, we'll have a good chance of fighting it. Okay, let me actually push out to two years. So that'll be 104 weeks for our time frame. And you can see, let's get that A value even lower. So let's bring that A value down to 0.2. And we can see that totally flattens the curve, right? So if we can, it's bringing that A value down, that flattens out the curve and lets us um, not have a large scale epidemic. Um, now, if I look at the max I, it's down to about 2% of the population. So the worst that this will get is that 2% of the population will have it um, under the model right now. Um, and you can see right when we get the vaccine, right here at week 30, that's the susceptible population starts dropping off quickly. And because we kept A low, um, the infection rate never had a chance to build up um, before the vaccine really kicks in and brings the susceptible curve way down um, early on. So we wanna get a vaccine in the hands of the public as soon as possible. Um, we wanna keep our A value as low as possible. And we can also, um, with other medical treatments, we can also push that, um, uh, the, we can get people into the removed pool earlier. Um, so that's what I wanted to show with this, that we can add a time delay with almost no effort.